Hello. Um, cross elasticity of demand. We can't look at price elasticity of demand and income elasticity of demand and leave out cross elasticity of demand. Cross elasticity of demand is defined as a measurement of the responsiveness of demand for one good when there is a change in the price of another good. And that matters, of course, because many goods, our demand for them is affected by uh, changes in the price of other goods because they may be a substitute or a complement good. Um, for instance, uh, you know, uh, if I like to play tennis, my, my demand for tennis balls may be affected by a change in the price of tennis rackets or a change in the price of footballs as an alternative or, uh, and so on. So certainly on the A level, paper one, module one, how markets work, this comes up quite a lot and it's a useful thing to remember that our demand for goods is very much affected by the availability and the price of alternative goods in alternative micro markets. So let's go through this. The, the equation is quite easy. Um, you might think it's difficult, but it's actually quite easy if you know the PED one. Because the cross elasticity of demand for good A with respect to B, so it's already looking complicated, but believe me, it isn't. What that means is we're going to measure how responsive is the demand for good A when B changes price. A is the subject of this study. Okay. A, how does its demand change when B changes price? Nothing else is changing. A's price is not changing. Income is not changing. Ceteris paribus, we are just looking at the change in the price of B. Equals, how do we calculate it? Well, it's the old equation, P over Q times change in Q over change in P. But of course, it's the price of good B and the quantities of good A. Okay. Let's work with an example. Um, let's imagine that A is Coke, Coca-Cola, okay, just put Coke. B is Pepsi. Now, we're going to measure what happens to the demand for Coke when Pepsi changes price. And let's imagine that, that this was done and we, we found some research and we found, let's keep it simple, we found that uh, when the price of Pepsi the quantity of Coke, well, when the price of Pepsi went from 1 to 2, the quantity of Coke bought went from um, 1,000 to 1,500. Okay, let's work with that. Let's put that into our equation. And we have the price of B. And the price of Pepsi was originally 1, and the quantity of Coke being bought was originally 1,000 times. Change in quantity, 500, divided by change in, uh, change in the price, which is 1. It went up by 1. And if you work that out, it's 500 over 1,000. It comes out to a half. And it's plus a half. Well, just like with income elasticity of demand, it's really important that you take your value and you look at the sign and the size. Let me make some room again. So we've got, we've got this, plus a half. Sine, is it plus, is it minus? We know that a plus value on cross elasticity of demand denotes that these goods are substitutes. Now we might have expected Coke and Pepsi to be substitutes, but we couldn't be sure of it until we analyzed the data. And the fact is that when the price of Pepsi goes up, probably there's reduced quantity demand for Pepsi. We're not looking at that. But we see that the, the rise in price of Pepsi has caused people to buy Coke. Probably what's happening is people are saying, oh, Pepsi's really expensive, don't want to buy Pepsi, I'll go and buy a Coke instead. Um, and, uh, but we can't be sure of you know, what's going through people's minds, but we can look at the numbers and we can say, when the price of Pepsi fell, there was an increase in the quantity demanded, uh, increase in the demand, sorry, of Coke, and it was positive and they are substitutes. If it came out negative, we'd have to conclude that the two goods being studied are complements. Now, the number, that's the size, in this case it's a half. Size, you know, um, with other elasticities, uh, bigger or smaller than one, is really important. Here, we just say, you know, how big is the number? Half is a, a medium size, it's quite a, a strong relationship. You see, the size of the number tells us about the strength of the relationship. The bigger the number, whether it's plus or minus, the bigger the number, the closer the relationship, be it substitute or complement, uh, between the goods. 
And the smaller the number, the closer to zero, the weaker is that substitute relationship or that complement relationship. So if we were studying the cross-elasticity of demand between carrots and computers, we'd probably find that XED equals zero, no relationship between those goods. A change in the price of carrots doesn't affect our demand for computers. Okay, so like elast uh, income elasticity of demand, very important you look at sign and size. Size, we just have to ask uh, kind of how far from zero. The further from zero, strong relationship. Near zero, weak relationship. Um, okay, so there we are. I think that's it. I think I've used enough time. Okay, thanks for watching. Please send me your comments um, on all the videos. Uh, it uh, keeps me going. And tell me what you want to see, because I'm running out of ideas. All right, bye-bye. <laughs>